What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for another episode of our Shadowrun Returns walkthrough. My name is Splattercat and as always I'm happy to have you here. Where we had left off, we had attended Sam Watts' funeral and things were looking a little shaky. I, I'm not entirely positive what's going to go down here. I've watched a couple things but, you know, I more or less try to keep things unruined but I sensed conflict on the breeze because we've got Coyote and also Jake here so why would they be here if everything was gonna go properly but as I recall we needed to talk to Jessica Watts and get going so Woogie is here but he's changed clothes he's a little bit different it's all right but I did have a run-in before this episode just as kind of a I guess a recap on what's been going off off camera and why my recording process has been somewhat impeded lately my, I actually lost my save game for Shadowrun, it just vanished. I actually logged into Steam and I was getting ready to play and I was like, I'm gonna record some Shadowrun today, and my save was gone. And so after having a total just nervous anxiety meltdown, I spent about an hour and a half and I figured out what went wrong. For some reason it had cleared out all the save files. If you've got the problem, let me know and I'll PM you on how to fix it because I have figured out. I also, I also posted how to fix it on the Steam forums, but it is a bug that I encountered. So let's get going. We'll talk to Jessica here and see where this is gonna go. Father O'Malley leaves, granting you an opportunity to speak with Jessica, but it's hardly a private conversation as the elf Lynn has chosen to stay and support her friend. As it so happens, Jake and Coyote have also lingered, lending you support too. Alright, so what would you like to talk about, Splattercat? Well, let's start with your mother. Did you know she was an organ donor? Jessica's demeanor turns oddly cool and stony in response to such a simple question. I'm afraid you're mistaken. Then how can you explain that her body parts made their way into a half a dozen recipients? You don't know what you're talking about. I know Sam helped your mother save lives through that donation. Her, her jaw clenches. She wasn't a donor, she was a victim. A victim of my brother's greed. He took from her, desecrating her body all to benefit himself. She never would have agreed to such a thing. Not even to save the lives of others? Lives like Sam's? Cracks are starting to appear on Jessica's carefully crafted mask. She destroyed, or Sam destroyed his own liver, pursuing oblivion. That was his choice. Your mother's gift meant a second chance for him. It wasn't a gift. It was stolen, and I wasn't about to let him destroy what little remained of her with his vulgar appetites. And so you hired Holmes to get it back. Jessica's eyes burn with righteous anger. Gone are any attempts to hide her guilt. Dr. Holmes made my mother whole again. He made it possible for me to place her to rest and say goodbye. He killed Sam and a half other people whose lives have been saved by your mother. She snaps. Those people were scavengers. Ghouls. They deserve to die for desecrating my mother's body. And poor Sam. It was his drinking and debauchery that drove my mother to the grave, as sure as if he had murdered her himself. My mother deserved honor and dignity. I gave her that today. She's finally whole again with a proper Catholic burial. Those ghouls who stole her organs, including Sam, they've paid the price for their sins. The beautiful elf breaks in, the essence of calm. Jessica, that's enough. We have business to attend to. My old family is dead and buried where they should be. They can't taint my new family now. They can't corrupt my children. I won't go through that again. Jessica, we need to go. Now. She presses a button on her comm link. She seethes at you. What happens now is on your head. If you had just walked away when I had told you to, McCluskey would have eventually found Holmes, collected the lieutenant's badge, and closed the case. But you had to keep digging. Now you and your friends have to die. Their blood is on your hands. Lovely. And we are completely just not in the position that I would prefer to be. Only three, no problem. So it looks like we're getting hit by some crazy splinter cell type guys. It's always going to be fun. And they've got katanas. So they're coming at us ninja style. She runs pretty well in high heels. You know what that means. <laughs> Anybody that watches the boondocks will know what I'm talking about. I'm going to use one movement point to move her into cover. These guys look like they're strapped for military grade conflict, so I'm a little worried. Hey, we hit both of them. Lovely. And so we're going to get a second shot. It looks like everybody's got three AP up here. I can't guarantee that shot's going to work at all, but you know what? We got a lot of damage on this side, guys, so I'm pretty happy with the result. The other thing we might think about... God, there is not a lot of cover here. If the game was arranged a little bit differently... I feel as though, well, this guy's got a gun, so I think if I can move with one AP over to here, I don't think this guy can close with me quickly enough to actually do anything to me, so I'm actually going to, let's do a dead eye shot, oh, it upgrades, okay, so at the beginning of this level we took dead eye shot, it's an upgrade to aim shot, so it increases your accuracy by 20, great, I'll take that, and so one guy is now down, 
and that leaves me with one extra movement point. I think I'm going to use that to move behind this little urn over here. This guy's got a sword, but I don't want to tempt the possibility that he might, or she, I think it's a female elf, I don't want to tempt the possibility that she might throw a grenade. And I think Sam is a little, I'm sorry, I think Jake is a little close, like we might still catch a grenade. Hey, we got our crits off. Lovely. Oh, there's another guy right there. Oh, and another one. Okay, so we've got almost like a little bit of a wave defense thing going on here. Let me take a look. I honestly feel as though possibly bringing the combat... There's so much more cover back here that I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to fall back to here. I don't like this sleeve of ground right here. It's... It's not optimal for the combat that we're going to be trying to fight. So I'm going to move her back to here. We'll take a turn and have her reload. And then we'll also, I suppose, have Jake take this alternate position right here. I'm going to turn on Woogie in just a moment and see if we can get him into position so that he can run back and forth and heal people. I'd like to play around with his abilities with the extra... Oh, he reloads for free. Really? I wonder if that's a pistol ability. That's cool. I didn't realize that he could reload for free. That's... That's pretty impressive. He's also got magical skills. I didn't know that he was a... It looks as though he's a mage? Interesting. So with his AP that's left over... Let's consider... Oh, he's got heals too. Okay, let's consider boosting Coyote's aim since she's using a shotgun. I'd love for her to be a little bit better at hitting people. Oh, yeah, that's what I was a tad worried about is that I'm not really... Sh oh, God, there's five of them now? Yeah, I was going to say, Woogie appears as though he's the only one who's still exposed. So let me go ahead and switch over to Woogie's control panel here. Woogie's now turned on. I don't have a droid repair kit. What is this? Let me take a look at... Launching a mortar. It heals targets with cleaning shrapnel. Interesting enough. So he can actually fall back pretty far, which is what I'm going to have him... Actually, let's look at the range on this thing first and foremost. So I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work. It doesn't appear to target like everything else in the game does. I'll figure it out in just a moment. So let's put him well back in cover. Unless something like comes from this way, I think we'll be alright. So he has no shot from there. That's unfortunate. He however does. So Jake can take a couple rounds on this mercenary. Which is what I think we're going to do. So there's 20 damage with a crit. And then two misses. Not the result I would have hoped for, but still something. She's got a 55% chance to hit. We can also throw in aim shots, so she's got a 70. Ooh, and it's still missed. Unfortunate, but we can still put a lot of shots off. So with a 50% chance, and you, if you've got a 57% chance in three shots, I can almost guarantee that one of them is going to connect. Now, Splattercat doesn't have a whole lot of abilities available. We can mark targets, however. So I think what I'll do is I'll mark him for next turn. And now that he's marked, he's basically a victim for the future. I'll also consider possibly... I don't know why I can't take a shot from here. I feel as though I'm in better cover than... Well, I suppose I'll leave him where he's at for now, and then we'll adjust him later. We've got a mage here who's taking a shot at Jake. And it looks like that's where most of the abuse is going to go on this turn. We might consider falling back. I'm just kind of watching what their movements are. Oh god, there's even more of them. You hear scratching coming from a crypt. We need to find out where Sam's sister might have gone. Maybe one of those guys can tell us with a little encouragement. So it's weird that I can't return fire here, but they're able to fire on me. That's something that makes me intensely suspicious of what's going on. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on here. Let me... Oh, it's because I didn't have my gun equipped. I'm a... Oh, God. Sometimes, sometimes I just don't know what to do with myself. So why isn't Woogie able to fire a grenade? Really? He's got, like, medkits and things? Well, how come that won't work? Do I have to equip it or something? I, I'm a little confused about the way this whole thing's going. Jake's looking a little 
injured, but I think he'll be all right. The mage is my primary, the person that I really don't want to continue existing. I think having Jake fall back might be an interesting idea. Can he get back to there with less than two moves? No, he can't. It's going to require him two moves to get that far away. So we'll take a shot, and then we'll use the other two AP to disengage and get him behind full cover so that he's not flanked. We can't take any shots at the mage or anything right now. What I will consider doing is using a burst fire on this guy, possibly. All right, so he's down now, so that's a little bit of trouble avoided. Let's consider having Woogie come over here, and then we're going to have him use a... Ooh, that's a little bit powerful for what I want him to do. Never mind, Woogie, stay where you're at. When people are more wounded, I'll have Woogie move in. It looks like she's got a shot. What does the kneecap ability do? It costs an AP, but deals less damage. Okay. I feel as though this mage is a big problem, so let's fire a couple rounds at him. I'm just going to be merciless with this mage, because there is the possibility that he can fire a mana bomb, which is just going to be all kinds of nasty. That means that I can never get my troops close together. The second that I try to use Woogie to heal somebody, he's probably going to try and AoE me. Additionally, we might run into a problem where one of these guys has a grenade. And so I'm just trying to take everything into account. I know some... Oh, no. Looks like we woke up the neighbors. We've got ghouls incoming. Hey, we can maybe we can use this to our advantage. Yikes. So let's... I don't see how we're going to use this to our advantage. That door is open. And this one over here has decided to start scratching now, so I'm wondering if I should just keep displacing. If I displace now, these two positions will likely converge on them, and in the worst case scenario, we'll be fighting a single front of both ghouls and these guys. If I stay here, there's the possibility that we'll be pincered between them. Now, these guys are probably going to get hit by whatever comes out of here, but still, I'm nervous about it. So with two moves, he can get back to there. We'll suppress. And then we'll have Jake step back with his other two moves. What is that on the ground right there? Maybe it's a summoning spot, I assume. That's what it was last time, but maybe for mages. So we might consider seeing what we can summon from there. I'm going to have him take a shot as well. Oh no, I used the wrong thing. Yikes, I, th I thought he was still using single shot. It didn't default like I wanted it to. Well then, let's consider for a moment our options. I can abandon this position, or I can just hope that by next turn things haven't gone completely and totally wrong, which is I think what I'm going to have to do. So let's hold the position for now, because I have to cover, because I've messed up, I have to, I absolutely have to cover Splattercat so that he can get away. Anybody else can get killed, Splattercat gets killed and our entire thing is just over. I'm a little weirded out by what this might possibly, it says that it heals the targets, but let me do a test here. I'm, it's only letting me target enemies with it, strangely enough. But it says that it heals me. I don't know. I can't. This looks like it's an ability that he would be using. So I'm a little weirded out by what's going on. I'm going to have him reload, though. The worst case scenario is whatever comes out of this crypt gets sacrificed. Or we sacrifice Woogie to it. It's not an option that I'm entirely stoked about. Oh, hell, ghouls. Yeah, oh, okay, machine gun from the side there, or at least a little bit of a problem. Ghouls in the lore are people that, well, I'm not really too sure on ghouls. It's been a long time. I know what ghouls are. They're like zombies. They're like little flesh-eating kind of hobos that live in abandoned buildings, things of that nature. But beyond that, I don't remember exactly what causes them. It's been a while. Okay, so now we're going to use the opportunity to displace as rapidly as we can. Same with Woogie. We're going to try and get him safely out of the way. I don't see any other ghoul holes up in here. There's a tent. So somebody's camping in the graveyard. That's fun. Let's assume for a moment that she can get away and we'll camp her back behind here. Yeah, those ghouls right there are not something that I feel like doing a undead tango with. Jake's ready to roll, so let's give him a reload. And let's take a look at what this might be. So what did that do for him? I'm wondering if that's like a focus point or a spot from which his spells become more powerful. Something definitely happened. It gave me a little graphic when he stepped on top of it. It did like a little tingly thing. So he can take shots 
at him, so we might as well. Yeah, we got a miss. It's okay. I don't hate it. That one's going to continue trying to get closer. They've got a reasonable amount of movement points. Good, good, good. That's what I was hoping for. They're now going to get swarmed by ghouls, and that should allow us to make a little gap in between their front line and ours. This combat is actually pretty... It's pretty advanced. It's taken a little bit. They're a giant grenade bait target right there. An enormous grenade bait target. I would actually consider grenading my own guys if I was on the other side. Let me see what I can do with Woogie first. Can Woogie get here within two turns? He can. So I'm wounded 11. Actually, no. Let's not do that. Let's have Jake throw a heal on Splattercat. There we go. I like that a lot better. So that puts him in a much better position. And I'm still going to test with Woogie how this is going to go here. If this ends up healing that guy, I really I am interested in figuring out like how the mortar works or if it's mislabeled. It dealt damage, so I'm not really positive. There, he doesn't seem to want to use, I don't know if it's a bug, I'm clicking on the ability just like I would anywhere else. Maybe I have to buy ammo for it or something of that nature. I'll take a look the next time I go to the, the rigger vendor. For right now, let's see, a line of fire controlled by the caster. It deals 20 damage, really. Well, we'll give that a try first. It missed. That's to be expected, but he's got an extra AP, so he'll put a round on that character. Splattercat's got a full twosie ready to go. He's got a better chance to hit this guy than the other one, so I'm going to put a round on him. There's a half crit for 18 damage. Coyote should be able to handle this guy without any issues. So there's nine damage. See, they're on the opposite side of the cover, so it's working for them just like it's working for us. Unfortunately, we're going to have to live with that result. Looks like... I'm not sure what the choice was with that movement, but the ghouls are doing their job. I don't feel nearly as outnumbered as we were before. I don't know if there's going to be an escape plan for this whole thing. Ooh, I don't know what the cooldown is on Armitage's heal, but we definitely want to see if possibly we can keep Splattercat healed. The AI seems to focus on the Decker pretty heavily, which is a giant contingency. That's a big, big problem. Yeah, he's almost ready to go down, so let me see what Jake can do. I think there was a cooldown on that heal, though. Yeah, there was. So the consideration we're going to have to make for the time being is we're really going to have to adapt to keep Splattercat alive. Now, he's injured enough to where I definitely want to use Woogie. Let's drag Woogie sorry ass back over here. Our little healing R2-D2. Right now, we're grenade bait, which I don't like, but it's something that I'm willing to, to risk. Oh, Woogie only had 2 AP. Okay. Well, Woogie's in position to heal me on the next turn. I don't think I'm going to take... Ooh, it's hard to tell. It's real hard to tell. Let me see if I could take a single shot at this individual. Hope for a crit. Okay, good. The crit did come through. Did we hear scratching from up here a moment ago? I wasn't paying very good attention. I'm not really too sure. I guess we'll consider unloading on that ghoul. I don't know how much HP a ghoul has, so... More than 36, so about 40. They probably have like 4 body points, maybe? Jake's still on cooldown. I don't know why our accuracy seems to be so borked. It might just be because I'm behind cover. I We're shooting at someone who's just out in the open. Or maybe they've actually ramped up the difficulty and given our foes a bit more dodge. It seems like we're only facing off against ghouls now, so I'm not terrified about the situation. We do have... Okay, so that one's on top of us now. And there's more coming from that way. God... We may want to make a tactical retreat. This whole thing is starting to look like a mauling. It is definitely on the horizon. I'm going to go full auto on these guys. So there's 36 damage right there. The other thing to consider is that Woogie has his own inventory. And I'm going to heal up Splattercat. Let's see what she can do with a couple shotgun blasts. So he's down. Aim shot's not going to be up yet. What does she have in her inventory? We need two... Ugh. Unfortunate. We'll see what Jake can do with this situation. So there's 18 more damage. She's got one AP left? No, she's out of AP. Alright. So let's consider... I don't know, Woogie. Give it a shot. Hey, and Woogie came through for us. So Woogie was able to annihilate a ghoul there. Top notch, Woogie. You're my hero for the time being. A smoke grenade. That's not going to help us, Jake. 
That is not what I was hoping for. So Lightning Explosion that does minus one AP, that's a pretty powerful ability, and it's one that I'm definitely gonna consider using. Subtracting the AP is gonna be helpful in the long run. Additionally, it's gonna put a damage over time, or a DPT, a damage per turn, effect on him. God, we got problems to deal with, guys. We have just absolute problems. I'm not sure what some of these ghouls are doing. Oh, they are all coming after Splattercat. He is out of ammo. So I think what I'm going to do with him for now is pull a runner. We just got to get him to safety. He doesn't have the AP to really pull off anything incredible. Neither does Woogie. I don't really want to leave these guys to the wolves, though, either. So let me take a look. She's got enough AP to put a Cavalier Frag Grenade on them, so I think that's what we're going to try. Alright, fantastic. So we've got a little bit of a damage advantage going, but not so much that I feel comfortable. Alright, so it's now evened out a tad. And let's see what Jake has on board for us. Now, I still am not positive what this little thing is going to do for me. Let's kill what we can. That's always a good idea in turn-based games. Eliminate- ooh, that's a bad miss to have right now, but he made up for it by finishing the job there. Hopefully she can avoid him. Okay, good. Amazing. So let's reload. He's only got one AP left. So is his- okay, his Deadeye aim is back up. So we'll take that shot for the 12 damage. I'll do a little bit of research in between episodes. I would almost guarantee they sort of do the same thing for mages in some respect. I'm not really sure if they act as foci or what they do. But for the time being, my guess is that it makes your spells more powerful. I'm not seeing any option to summon anything from them, so I'm not gonna... I mean, unless there is the possibility, maybe if you have a focus or something? I don't know. I'll look it up in between episodes. I'm learning things. I, I try not to play this game on the side because I want a first-hand experience with you guys. Some people hate that, some people like it. It's It seems like a toss-up with a lot of viewers. Ooh, two really bad misses up front. Two 80% misses in a row, like a 4 and 100% chance, so it's that's not so good. Although that was just kind of back-of-the-envelope math there, so I could be absolutely wrong. I can't guarantee that that mortar isn't going to hit Coyote. So I think I'll just have Woogie back off for now. Ooh, okay, so they put a nasty poison attack on you. That's fun. That is for the funsies. We'll take a multi-shot right there. Let's see what we can do with Jake for now. Jake's accuracy is not so good. I wish they would let me allocate his karma because I never like the way that developers put characters... Ooh. Well, I never like the way that developers allocate the ability points on characters. I just don't like it. So there's a shot. Ooh, a 36 ringer of a hit. And so we've secured the cemetery. What a combat. Wow. I am just impressed. That was a great battle. I had a lot of fun with that one. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it because that one got my blood rushing a little bit. I wasn't entirely sure how we were going to resolve that whole thing. For a moment, I contemplated running this way, but I just don't know. Let's take a look inside the crypts, actually. Anything in here? I'm holding down the out key right now. We're going to check all of them. We're going to run around and see what we've got. But first and foremost, let's check this Mohawkied black guy down here with those killer shades and see if we can maybe get some information out of him. You listen as the sounds of gunfire and spell bursts fade away and the silence of the dead returns to the cemetery. The man is beyond healing. As you look down at him, you notice the quality of his suit and shoes. This isn't a runner and he's not from the street. Jessica Watts, she hired you. Where can I find her? You get nothing. He convulses and then dies. We don't know each other too well, but it seems to me that you need to find a better group of people to associate with. Yeah, coming from Jake, given the events of the SNES game, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that advice with a grain of salt. Yeah, you're not the first person to tell me that. Yeah, well, it's part of living in the shadows. Do the research, chummer. So, how did those troops materialize? You didn't recognize who the elf was? Nah, who is she? She's Lynn Telestrian, super rich and super into the Universal Brotherhood. She's a major spokesperson for them in Seattle. Hmm. Jake grabs the dead man by the throat. At first it looks like he's trying to kill him again, but then you notice he's feeling for something under the skin. Yep, he's got a corporate ID chip. 
You watch as Jake pulls out his modified PDA and slots the chip. Mr. Wiley here was with Eagle Security. They work for the UB. That must have been Lynn Terrestrian's security detail we just chewed through. If she's protecting Jessica, they'll be inside the Universal Brotherhood. If you're gonna hit the Universal Brotherhood, I'm coming too. That psycho just admitted she had my friend Sam and a lot of innocent people killed so she could put her dead mother back together. That's totally slagged up. Plus, she and her elf buddy Lynn just tried to geek me. They're gonna hurt for that. Yeah, given, you know, every time I look at her, they did a good job with her portrait. You can see just the violence in her eyes. I've known a couple females like that where you look at them and you know they don't put up with any trash. Suit yourself, lady. I was only stopping by to pay my respects to Sam. Merc hit squads in the Universal Brotherhood. Not my scene at the moment, but I can call up some of Delilah's runners if you want to go there now. Let me know what you decide. Yeah, let's take a look inside the crypts. I'm not really sure I want to jump ship at the moment and go in between zones. We've got eight karma to play with. And given the nerf they gave us in that last go to our overall hit percentages, I'm not happy with the way we were missing a lot. I mean, we had some bad rolls. And there's only so much you can do about bad rolls. Like those 80% chance, you know, those 80 chance shots that we missed back to back, that's something you can't really do anything about because that's really the dice just being like F you and giving you a giant dicey ivory middle finger. But the 56% and things I'd really prefer. Oh, there we go. So we've got some stuff we can loot up here. We picked up jazz, so there's a little bit of drug paraphernalia here in the cemetery. Not exactly the location that I would choose to have a trip at. But, you know, some people, some people like to float in very odd places, so... Let's see here, a Cavalier Frag Grenade. I'm actually gonna swap that out for... Let me swap that out for the drugs that I have on hand. I would very much like to have that grenade. We're not so good at throwing grenades for the time being. I may give it to Coyote to replace the... grenade she used up in the last bit of combat. I'm going to continue swooping through, though. I want to make sure that we find everything there is to loot at this location before we get on out of here. We've got a little bit of time left in the video. Not enough, really, to go to the next zone anyway, so this is really just a way for you guys to extend your time here at the Nerd Castle for the day. Something that I never have a problem with. After almost losing my save file, I am really excited to play the game. It's something that... <laughs> God, it's made me paranoid. It really... I was up on the harebrained schemes forums just like... An inch away from raging, and uh, Force 4, Abomination Elemental. Let's send that to the stash, because that's not going to be very useful for me. Why that's hanging around in a cemetery, I'm not entirely sure, but that is a pretty powerful... That's a pretty powerful avatar for somebody to be summoning. A Force 4 is no joke, so... Let's talk to Jake, and then we'll see what happens here. We'll read the introduction to the next zone, if indeed we can. Let's see, the Brotherhood probably retains mercs like the one that just attacked us for their security detail. You're going to need a full team if you're heading into their chapter house. I can arrange for some of Delilah's rumors to meet you there, though, if you want to go now. Nah, I'm going to stop at the Union first and gear up. Let's go ahead and do that. And I guess the exit was up here, even though we came through that way. Let's head back to the Seamstress Union. We'll do the load in there, and once we've loaded in, I'll cut the episode out, and we'll be good to go for the day. Looks like that's going to be my exit right there. I don't see anything else to loot, so... You'd think somebody would come around every now and again to clear out the tents. I mean, I've seen homeless people live in cemeteries before, like under bridges in my hometown and whatnot, but never to that extent, like dozens of tents around. You put the pieces together. Jessica Watts was reassembling her mother, Melinda, gathering her missing organs to allow Melinda a decent burial. Organs that Sam sold for a quick buck after her death. The ghoul attack after the ceremony didn't appear to be part of Lynn Telestrian's attempt to get you out of Jessica's way. They were just more victims of the magic's helter-skelter return to the world. Lynn's well-armed security unit was a different animal entirely. You head back to the Union to resupply and rearm. Whatever Lynn and Jessica are involved with, it appears to be a large operation. And the trail leads to the Universal Brotherhood. Alright guys, so I'm thinking this is a really good spot to break off the episode considering it just auto-saved for me. And the save system in this game is a little janky. It's not something that makes my job any easier, but... I try to take opportunity when it comes by. We have almost landed exactly on the 30 minute mark. I will see you guys next time. So, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle. Take care out there, everybody, and have fun running in the shadows without me. See you guys.